In most small boat launching and retrieving scenarios, submerging the trailer hubs and brake drums is unfortunately a regular fact of life. Something that simply cannot be avoided regardless of the consequences for the bearings and the brakes. If trailed units with a gross laden weight exceeding 750 kilos were not required by law to have brake wheels, then I'm sure that the vast majority of small boat owners would operate without them. But it is the law, and for those dipping their wheels in corrosive salt water, it's a constant maintenance battle we have to deal with. Hubs at least can have grease pumped inside them at the top of the slip to expel any seawater ingress that would otherwise emulsify and weaken the grease on the way home. Brakes on the other hand require regular strip down maintenance, which if not given, allows this eventually to turn into this. And the risk that one morning you end up going nowhere because the wheels have locked solid by the brakes having seized on while the boat has been standing with the trailer handbrake on in the driveway. A partial answer is to chop the wheels instead of using the handbrake between trips. But in reality, this is only delaying the inevitable. Unless of course you are prepared to do something about it by way of regular preventive maintenance. Opening up the brake drums every few trips to maintain the moving parts is probably the best approach. But human nature says it won't get done, particularly during the darker, colder winter months. Some years ago, I wrote about the idea of exposed externally mounted disc brakes which could be flushed and maintained without having to dismantle anything, and in recent times this has become a reality on some rapid trailers. I suggested the same idea to the R&D people at Indispension Bolton, who for safety and liability purposes were reluctant to go down that route, until an approved Ministry of Transport standard was drawn up, which they could then work to. They did however concede that there was a problem, and agreed to look at other ways of reducing it through freshwater flushing using existing covered brake drum technology. To cut a long story short, holes for hose lock fittings were positioned at various locations on brake drum backplates, then the moving parts were dusted with French chalk to simulate salt, and fresh water was sent through, the idea being that by trial and error they would determine the best position to remove the maximum amount of salt. That done, a prototype was put together and our boat was winched onto it with the instructions not to do anything other than regular routine flushing for 12 months, then bring it back to the factory for appraisal. For various reasons that 12 months slipped to 18 and still the brakes appeared to be working. But what might be waiting inside the drum when it was finally opened would be anybody's guess. Good or bad, with the camera running, the mechanic got to work, and this is what we actually found. Obviously, there was a light surface coating of rust, which is no less than you would expect even from a trailer used solely in fresh water. Amazingly, all it took was a good blast of braking clutch cleaner and an application of copper slip to the moving parts to ensure another 12 months of service. No salt water seizing no failure to comply with the law, and as importantly, no lost fishing time. That, however, is not the end of the experiment. The next phase is to look at ways of getting the salt out as soon as the immersion in seawater has taken place, and most importantly, before heading off for home. In summer, water could start to evaporate out while the trailer is standing in the sunshine, and most certainly will through frictional heat as the brakes are applied on the journey home. But until an onboard solution is found and implemented by trailer manufacturers, then a barrel of fresh water and a hand pump with a hose lock connection is a DIY alternative. Meanwhile, flushing back at home has more than proved its value in prolonging the life of boat trailer brakes.